indeed we have. So unfortunately our shadow tracking exercises run into a technical problem because where the tracks go, we don't have reception and also it goes into a very dense thick block. So there's no way that we can follow any further. It's also getting quite dark. But we have come across this ever so elegant kudu bull that's on top of this termite mound in this late afternoon sun and he looks absolutely spectacular up there. It's a pity that there's a few trees around him because it would really be the complete picture if he was just completely isolated on that termite mound. But he is a stunning example of a kudu and this is why I love them. These male kudu just look so impressive and so elegant with those big twirled horns that come off the top of the head. They really are quite spectacular. Now, those horns there are quite something. They're quite large, and you can see they've twisted their third turn. Interesting, there's lots of flies on the tips of them. I wonder why that is. It's the first time I've actually ever noticed lots of flies on kudu horns. But you can see that they've gone through their third turn now. So this is a fully grown adult. But the record length for a set of horns on a kudu is 6 foot 2. Now, that is the height that I am. So... It's like me standing on top of their head. Can you imagine how big that must be? That must have been such an impressive animal. Those horns there are probably no bigger than three and a half feet, four feet. So to have six foot two horns is quite amazing. They won't be exactly straight because they measure along the curves. So the wider it goes, also the more length will add to it. And the spirals get counted in that length. So they run a tape around the spiral and to the top. But that is an absolutely incredible specimen. And look at those massive ears. And isn't he being very good to us? Generally, kudus are so skittish and shy that they run off as soon as you stop anywhere near them. But he's decided to give us a real good pose and let us see all those beautiful markings on the face. Those whites around the eyes that just help bring light in, in the shadowy areas that kudu inhabits. And then the little white markings on the lips and face that just help break up the outline. And if you look on the side of his neck there, you can see, look at the bulging muscle that is coming out. Kudu, it's very noticeable. Because of the size of their horns, they develop these massive neck muscles to be able to keep those horns up. And often when they turn like that, that muscle just bulges out. And you get these really big, thick neck and shoulders that you see there. And isn't he looking in good condition as well? It's amazing how these animals have recovered. We saw those buffalo earlier today. And... I was saying to VM, it's amazing how much better they look than a few months ago. And the kudu are the same, because kudu are one of the ones that do suffer heavily in drought. Their numbers tend to decrease in drought periods because they really can't find enough food. But this guy is in really fabulous condition. He's got beautiful amount of meat on him, and he's looking very, very good. Oh, little oxpecker. Ah, Debbie in Vancouver. Well, I would imagine it's a little bit cooler there than it is here, Debbie. But you're wondering about seasonal changes. So we are going to start getting colder. Already that summer scorching sun seems to have disappeared. It started to get a little bit cooler. There's a colder wind that's blowing. Our days get shorter. And because of the days getting shorter and the cooler conditions that we get, the plants begin to start dying so what we're going to see is the whole bush is going to change color it's all going to become a very drab brown and khaki color the grass is going to become very very light and very little nutrition and over the winter period so the animals are going to exhaust the resources and stamp all the grass down the grass is also going to die off a little bit so all these seeded stems that we see coming off die off and we get this very short layer of grass through the winter and a lot of the trees will lose their leaves so it's going to be a very different landscape than what you see now and i'm not sure if you've been watching for a while debbie but if you have you would have seen in September, November, October, November last year, we were at the end of that drought. And the stark contrast to what we're seeing now is quite incredible. The funny thing is, though, is that our, even though we've had all this rain, and it looks like the grass is really long and that we've got a lot more grass coming back, it's actually not that thick. So I was looking today, the, the clumps of grass are quite widespread apart. So once we go into winter, we're actually going to get a very similar effect to what we had last year with the drought. We're going to get a situation where it's going to look very, very barren this winter. There really hasn't been that enough grass seeds that has come together, that's created a nice carpet. It's quite sparsely grassed. It looks good because it's very, very long at the moment, but it's actually, in fact, not as good as it could be. So 
It will be a difficult winter. At least this winter we're going to have a lot of water. We have a lot more water this time than we did at the same stage last year. But wasn't that kudu wonderful that it just stayed sitting for us? I think 